the diamond sutra meditation leads to sincerity today the hindu community celebrates the festival of the light in some part the celebration of the world the celebration is today and in other parts it is tomorrow it is because of the sighting of the moon whatsoever be the reason whatsoever be the day the most important aspect is a celebration a sharing you can only share that you have the sharing is the essence of these festivals sharing of the physical resources sharing of your love awakening awareness understanding in millions of the ways you can share and then life unfolds millimeter in a moment life holds an entire ocean as emotions in a single moment in a single moment life creates a musical symphony as words overflow from deep within an awakened one whose echo continues to linger in your ears like an enchanting melody a single moment of life of awakening a single moment of life awakens the life of humans i have spoken earlier on the seven year cycles human life moves in seven year cycles and by the time one attains this age of 42 the cycle should complete the cycle relates to movement of the energy energy moves through various channels and by the time attain to age of 42 it should attain fruition look at the life of a seed the life of a seed moves in different phases first the seed is planted in a well prepared soil then it remains there hidden in the womb of the earth for some time then it begins to burst and all the entire process begins it goes through the various cycles the cycle of soil being prepared according to the the seed then planting of the seed and so on and so forth until it attains to fruition in the same way when life comes in it moves into various cycles of seven years by the time one attains to the age of 42 the complete transformation should have taken place the fruition should have happened and this happens when the light of awareness dawns and when the light dawns everything becomes visible clearly visible to you you know the true nature of things around indeed awareness renders each moment precious extraordinary and sublime then the small things are no longer smaller when such a person's awareness sensitivity and love 
that even the most ordinary experiments when you talk about, about talk of the human beings, those pebbles turn into precious gems. It is the level of awareness that makes everything precious and meaningful. And the words which carry with them the light that is reaches the innermost core and you allow these words to reach you, to touch you, something begins to change. These words are like raindrops or the drops of a waterfall. The waterfall is coming from an invisible source that you cannot see from where the water is coming from. But the water is certainly coming from somewhere. It falls on the hard rock, drop by drop. It takes a longer period of time, but the drop one day connects to the rock. The raindrop that was just slipping out of the just touching the outer surface of the rock and slips from there. One day, the same rock penetrates deep within the rock. It makes a hole into it. In the same way, when constantly these words reach the innermost core of your being, slowly and slowly they start creating the peace in your consciousness, your way of understanding, your way of thinking, everything slowly and slowly begins to change and then the most ordinary becomes the extraordinary. And to say extraordinary is a way of saying that ordinary is the most extraordinary. We should use the word the you become precious. Something that was meaningless in you that becomes precious in you. And then you interact the energy that overflows has the capacity to transform, to bring about the change into the other. Quite often we inquire how to bring meaningfulness in life. It is the human understanding that has made life a meaningless summer. All meaning from life has vanished. The way to bring meaning once again into life is through sensitivity. The way is that of awareness. It is the awareness that brings meaning in life and with awareness ordinary life becomes meaningful, you become sensitive to the needs of the others. If you have love overflowing, you will become sensitive to the needs of the others. And then your direction of the group changes from horizontal to vertical. Horizontal means you are remaining on to the surface. Swimming is an aspect of horizontal movement. You remain on the surface of the water, you move from the space A to B, B to C and so on and so forth. On the contrary, in diving, you dive from the same spot, from one spot, 
and you go into the depths from the same spot. You have entered into your being. You are going deeper and deeper. This process is known as going within. Going within happens when you start a diving like movement and when you reach to the innermost core, the deepest core of your being, you find the genius. A poet has said, some has been standing on the shore and trying to seek the precious gems. I have died deep within the ocean of the moon and brought the precious gems from me. Kuch log kinare pe dhundha kiye gaya Some people are seeking the death on the shore. On the shore you seek not, you find not the death. And you remember the precious gems are in the deepest core of the moon, deepest core of the ocean. हम डूब के तूफानों में तहलाए समंदर को। I have died through the vicissitudes, the turmoils, and then have brought the death of the ocean, death of the being. A person who has started the vertical movement, he does not. Grow old. Normally, the body in that case, normally our body grows and the consciousness also grows. But in the other case, the body will naturally grow old, it has to. Perish one day because it is illness. It is matter. But that which enters the matter, the light, has no age. It is beyond time and space. Normally we grow old. This is an aging process. This is negative growth that leads to Degeneration of cells, another body tissues. When a child is born, he is innocent and beautiful. As the child continues to grow, he goes on gathering layers upon layers of consciousness. Thus, the consciousness gets to be clouded. This process is not working. Animals grow. And this process requires no intelligence. Growing up is a totally different experience. Generally, the process of growing up that we know is a horizontal process, moving on the surface as we do in swimming. Distance is covered, but you remain on the surface alone. On the other hand, growing up really implies growth of consciousness. It is a vertical movement. It is like diving. The diver dives deep down into the womb of the ocean. He enters the sea from the surface and moves to deeper depths of the ocean. Meditation takes you within the womb of the existence of your being, within the womb of the existence of your being. It leads to your height or depth, both are the same thing, both mean the same thing. Strangely enough, Time moves only in a horizontal state, horizontal straight line. Each moment 
is followed by the next moment and this process continues. So too mind is horizontal. How is mind horizontal? One thought comes, it is followed by another. But all this happens in a straight line, a road, just like a traffic. Meditation is the process of growing in consciousness. You are not doing anything, just sitting down and observing the breathing slowing down, the bodily movement becoming less and less. You can sit down in a statue-like position, unmoving, and with that, the thoughts also cease. Meditation is the process of growing in consciousness. It takes the aspirant from the layers of consciousness below the surface to higher altitudes. If we draw a graph, there are three layers below the origin line. The line that has this, where the x and y axis intersect one another. Where the ordinates is zero, zero. There are three layers below that. The original, original, the origin line represents the conscious layer. There are three layers below and three layers above. The layers below are unconsciousness, collective unconsciousness, and cosmic unconsciousness. I have used one term, unconsciousness. It has two aspects, unconscious and subconscious, they go together. And the layers above are superconscious, collective superconscious and cosmic superconscious. When you are in the company of a com in a commune, you talk to someone who have attained to deeper reach to the deeper layers of consciousness, his company, his explanations, to work like a virus, it begins to change something in you. This is known as collective consciousness. In the same way, the negative influence of the company that you carry is known as collective unconsciousness and then superconsciousness. Cosmic superconscious meditation, meditation is then a vertical process. It takes you beyond mind and mind is time. It take, in that process, it takes you beyond the mind and beyond time as well. Going beyond mind is going beyond the space too, because mind is space. Then meditation is both beyond time and space. Both mind and time are synonymous horizontal process of movement, when meditation happens, both mind and time cease. That is what growing in eternity means. Eternity is both beyond time and space. It is an experience, not a thought. There is a difference between the two. Experience grows within you. It is a process of when light or awareness or no interacts in the outer world of objects and being and shows the true image, true aspect of 
the objects and being, out of that and experience things. Thought comes from outside, none of the thoughts are yours. So meditation is an experience, not a thought. It is beyond time and space and it is the taste of eternity, an experience, not a thought. Then it becomes the simplest art. It teaches you how to be silent. It is a state of non-doing when you are not doing anything, something is happening. Then how can it be difficult? Yet still people find it difficult to obtain. This is the way of laziness to attain enlightenment. You don't do anything to attain this inward silence or inward this inward silence that you feel and enlightenment is your intrinsic nature. You have it in seat for you. It only requires the right environment and a process that you go through. When you look within, you realize you are the beauty, the silence, the ecstasy and the blissfulness. You need to be kind to yourself. Just sit silently, do nothing, neither physically nor mentally. Just sit silently. And remember, grass grows by itself. For grass to grow, you have to do nothing. You can do things, you can cook, you can fix a car. All these involves doing. But relaxation is a process of non-doing. You will definitely find it difficult in the beginning because your whole life has been based on doing. You cannot sit silently without doing anything. You must do something. You are sitting down. You are waiting for someone. You have a pen in your hand. You start doing something, just observe. Can you sit silently without doing anything even for a moment? And then increase these moments, one plus one, and they will start growing exponentially. This is the process of relaxation. People say that they are relaxing, but they have a newspaper in their hand or something. Relaxation is a non-doing process. Therefore, you will find it difficult in the beginning because your whole gestalt is that of the outer world, the dimension of doing. By nature, you are addicted to doing. And this will take time for your addiction to vanish and you move from doing, relax and watch. This being is not doing. Sit silently, doing nothing. Witness whatsoever happens. Thoughts will float in the mind. The body may feel tension. Be on the hill a watcher of all that is happening in the world. And this process of being on the hill and watching from there all that is happening in the body is a man. This is your nature. And this is meditation or marakba. That is why we use in Sufi terminology the word marakba, waiting. This comes into you. 
it comes to you as a dream. This is the ultimate flowering. Meditation is not just science or art. It is either both science and art or none. In fact, meditation is neither. Old habits continue to play their parts. Thoughts continue in the rush hour. Your body is not accustomed to sit silently. You can remain the whole night dancing and partying without a dream. But when you are asked to sit silently, you feel uncomfortable. The mind's wavelength reaches below four and you begin to fall asleep. You will remain tossing and turning. The mind is whirling in thoughts, both consistent and inconsistent dreams and fantasies, but you remain at the center, witnessing the process. You become the center of the cyclone. You become the center of a circle, a center around which myriads of circumferences, myriads of circles can be drawn. All the religions of the world teach you. You are asked to stop the mind or force the body in a still posture. And when you force the body, cannot be all prayers, concentration, singing, etc., belong to the domain of Duma. You cannot force the stillness. It will then be false. When stillness comes on its own, silence descends on its own accord. In the moment of witnessing, thoughts begin to disappear. And as thoughts disappear, silence joins. It has its own beauty. You do not consider thoughts as your own. No judgment. Whether a particular thought is good or bad, or should it, or should it not be there, you are a watcher without prejudice or judgment. Your being becomes a mirror that reflects all that comes in front of you. A mirror simply reflects without any judgment. This is state of mirroring everything both within and without, is meditation. This state of mirroring everything, both within and without, is meditation. Once you continue, it will happen to you. I can speak on my own authority. It happened to me. It happened to Buddha. It happened to Jesus, Lao Tzu, their truth and many others. Maybe a few days may pass, a few years as spent, but certainly it will happen one day. You continue the process. You continue to remain a witness. It may take time, which will depend on each individual. You can be a doer and a witness at the same time, you can eat, sleep, talk, etc. and yet be a witness to it. But this state comes later on. In the beginning, you can do the simpler things, but later on, you can do the complicated things and your witnessing is not distinct. You can eat, walk, sleep, talk, etc. and yet be a witness. You can move your hands unconsciously as a habit or move it with full awareness. There is a quality to difference. When you move it unconsciously, it is mechanical and when you move the hands full of awareness, there is a certain way 
even your hand will feel the silence within. What to say of the mind? Constant watching leads to disappearance of thought process. Ultimately, ultimately, it begins to happen when the musician dissolves in the music. The dancer disappears, only the dance remains. The meditator disappears, only the process of witnessing remains. Only the witnessing remains. Mind is doing, all religions teach you doing. Be a watcher without a judgment. This is meditation. Be a watcher without any judgment. Be mirror light, radiate, reflect all that comes in front of you. Have you known this quality of the mirror? You can place anything in front of it, beautiful or ugly. It makes no judgment. It simply reflects as it is. The moment your consciousness becomes mirror like, it simply reflects. You have attained to inner silence. And that is why one of the important statements is that judge not that you not be judged. Normally, even if your opinion is not asked, you are waiting to give your judgment, to give your opinion. No one has asked, and you know in that what happens? I have not asked your opinion, but you are giving your opinion. You are creating a stimuli. And this is how the layers of unconsciousness are formed in an individual. And when time comes, they accumulate, they begin to explode. Even when you are, even when the circumstance and situation does not require you to, ex, to speak in a particular manner, but you do, they surface on their own. To be a watcher without any judgment and you will attain to meditation that will bring inner clarity. With that comes peace.